right before we jump into this video, if you'd like to take better pictures in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it. I'm gonna send you that guide for free. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com and this is a review of Canon's 100 to 400 millimeter RF f5.6 to f8 IS lens. Now I took this lens out to shoot two different things. Well, first I wanted to go shoot birds at the zoo, but unfortunately when I got to the zoo, they're like, sorry, all the birds are packed away because there's a avian flu going around, so there's no birds for you to shoot. So I honestly shot nothing at the zoo. But thankfully the next day, there was lacrosse and baseball happening at St. Joe's University. I like going out to shoot these college sports. It's much easier than shooting professional sports, but lacrosse is one of the most difficult sports I've ever attempted to shoot because they're wearing these big ass helmets that make it much harder to focus on, especially with so many guys crossing and running across the field. Now, with that being said, I did use the Canon R5. I chose not to use the R3 because honestly, if you own an R3 and you spend all that money, you probably have more money to spend on the more expensive glass. This isn't gonna be an R3 lens. That's why I didn't use it on there. It's gonna be great on an R6, you have an R6 right here, which is great for sports, but I didn't take that out. I wanted to use the R5 because it has the same focusing system as the R6 has. Now, how does it feel in the hands? The answer, cheap. The first thing you think about when you pick this lens up is, wow, this is pretty inexpensive feeling. But that's what you get for the price. I'm just gonna tell you the price right now, it's 649. This is kind of like a throwaway lens. I mean, throw away, like if it breaks, you kind of throw it away. That's pretty inexpensive for a 100 to 400, especially when you put it into comparison to this bad boy from Canon. This is a 100 to 500 millimeter lens. This is $2,800. This is $649. We'll talk more about that a little on, uh, a little later on in the video. So the first thing that you notice other than it being super light is that there's no lens hood. It doesn't come with a lens hood. Maybe they wanted to save like $2 by not giving you a lens hood. You can add one on. That would be the same one as the 70 to 300 that Canon has. I'm personally a fan of always using a lens hood. I just don't want any stray light coming in and affecting my image, uh, except for the kids today. They like all of that ghostly looking lens flare, which I think looks absolutely terrible. And it's gonna look like terrible garbage in this lens if you get lens flare. Uh, in terms of the thread on the front, it's 67 millimeters. I do not put filters on glass. I don't care if it's the cheapest lens or the most expensive lens. The stores hate hearing me say that, but the truth of the matter is I've never put any UV filters except for at the very beginning when I was sold UV filters at the stores because they're like, this is to protect your lens. I'm like, why would I put a piece of glass that's not as good as the piece of glass that I'm using in front of that glass and possibly dumb it down. I don't do that. Do I like, look, if you're shooting in dirty environments, like you're at the beach and stuff's blowing around, it's a good place to risk or not risk it and put a, uh, basically a lens condom on the outside of your lens. That's going to help out in those situations. But no, you don't need a filter, a UV filter on something like this. You have a control ring out here. If Canon wanted to save money, they would have gotten rid of the control ring. I don't think that's necessary. It's something that I personally never use. You could control aperture, ISO, you could change shutter speed if you wanted to from here. I would never do that. It doesn't work for me. Uh, there is a lens lock here on the side right here. You can lock the lens so that it doesn't zoom. Usually you do that because there's some lens creep, but this lens is so light that it's not gonna creep. Creep is where you're walking and talking and then the lens just starts going like this whoop, on its own. There is no lens creep there, so I'm not sure why the lock is even there. We have a couple of more switches on here. We've got your autofocus to manual because this is your manual focus ring right here. That's, I just leave it on autofocus at all times. And you have your stabilization on and off. I personally would leave stabilization on at all times. It's pretty amazing that you have a 100 to 400 that has IS built in. That's pretty cool. And when it comes to zooming, this is 100, this is 400. So it is a external zooming lens. It's not done internally. That's why it extends. Is that a big deal? 
Not really. Uh, these lenses are meant to do that. They, that's just how they keep the price down and they keep it a little smaller. Now, keep in mind, this is a variable aperture lens. At 100 millimeters, you're at 5.6. As you zoom out, your aperture is going to go up to f8. Now, what that means is, a variable aperture lens, is when you zoom in, you are losing light. So at 400 millimeters, it's f8. That is a whole stop of light difference from 5.6 to f8. So if you are manually controlling your, your shutter speed and your exposure, you're going to see that it's going to instantly get a little darker because you're cutting back by one stop of light. So to compensate for that, you either need to slow your shutter speed down to let in, to gather more light, or you need to raise your ISO. If you're someone who's gonna shoot on auto, the camera's gonna do all that work for you, but I just want you to understand that I was shooting in manual, and you can see that when I went from 100 to 400, or from 400 to 100, how much brighter it gets because it goes from eight to 5.6. Now with that also being said, you can put teleconverters on this, but do not put teleconverters on this. It is going to take your F8 and make it an F11. If you put a 1.4 converter on there and if you put a 2X converter, you're at F16. The autofocus and the quality and everything is just gonna go to crap. And plus those teleconverters are more expensive than this lens. Actually, they're probably pretty close to the same price as the lens. Now, before I jump into the pictures, let's talk about weight. It's 1.4 pounds or 635 grams. It is a, you know, Whoa, I did it, Steven. I, I flipped it around and didn't drop it because I don't want to break my counter because I'll, I'll break the lens. It's not my lens, it's, it's Canon's. But I still take care of all gear, whether it's mine or not mine. Let, let's jump into the first picture. And I went out and, like I said, to photograph lacrosse. I used the lock-on tracking with face detect and eye detect. I actually had to turn off animal eye detect because when Steven knew I was gonna go to the zoo to photograph, he set it to animal. And I said in my brain, do not forget to switch this back to people. So I did, I switched it back to people. And then I went to take pictures and Steven had one other warning for me before I went out. He's like, don't forget to put a memory card in it. And guess what? I didn't have a memory card in the R5. The good news is I also had a Nikon Z9 with me because I was testing out Nikon's 100 to 400 lens, which is more expensive and better than this. And luckily I had two cards in that bad boy and I could throw one of them into here and continue to shoot. All right, jumping into the pictures. Let's zoom in on here. This one is in focus. Now I'll tell you there were a lot of pictures that I got with these guys running around where it just wasn't super tack sharp. Uh, one, because this lens isn't gonna give you the sharpest and tackiest of stuff when it comes to action because it has to track those subjects. The camera did a pretty good job tracking the, the faces and the bodies when it couldn't find the head. Uh, but sometimes it was just a little softer in certain situations because the focus couldn't keep up. Now you do have those USM motors in here. They are pretty fast, but it's going to be slower than what you would be used to with a more expensive lens. Uh, this one is at, we're at F8, we're at 359 millimeters, and you can see these guys in the background are pretty much in focus. That's what happens with F8. There's distraction, anything that's a distraction in the background is going to be a distraction in your image because F8 isn't going to blow that out of focus. So that's the difference between a much more expensive lens and something like this, because a 402.8 is gonna set you back 13, 14 thousand dollars. And yeah, you would see such a difference in compression of the background and the background wouldn't be a distraction, but it's more of a distraction in this case. Let me jump in here real quick to show you FroPak 3 in action on this file from the Canon R3, starting with Fifth Element. Fifth Element gives it a pretty unique look right off the bat. Next, we've got Almost Famous with No Grain. It kind of gives it a pretty filmic look, which is actually pretty cool. Then we've got Eckert, which is a really good catch-all one, and Prestige Worldwide looks really good on this as well. Look at that. But I do wanna go back to Fro Pack 1 to show you two of these. We've got Waffle House, that I just, I mean, I love the way that one looks. And then of course, one of my go-tos is Skittles to make it go boom. Now, if you're looking to give yourself a great starting point as well as speed up your raw workflow, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are still on sale. Or if you wanna get Fropack 1, Fropack 2, and Fropack 3 together as an ultimate bundle, you can do that and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. 
this image, the next one, where I'm tracking the subject, running down the field. He's getting ready to wing that ball into the net, and that ball is hard. Actually, I think right after he wanged this, because I don't think you can say winged. I mean, it's winged it, but I like to say wanged it. Right after he wanged it, I think he either hit the post or the goalie, and the ball was this close to hitting me in the nuts. Thankfully it didn't, because it was like nut level as it bounced by me, and I just kept my legs closed because I was sitting on my walk stool and it didn't hit me. Be careful at lacrosse games. If you're gonna go shoot behind the net, you might get pegged in the face with a ball, and that you don't want, because those balls are definitely going to hurt if they hit you, especially if they do hit you in your balls. But. This is what's happening. Uh, we're at 7-1 here. We're at 174 millimeters. We're not even zoomed out all the way, but look at the background. Are these people in focus? The answer is pretty much. Is it more of a distraction? Is it, does it look more like a snapshot? The answer is yeah, it's gonna look more like a snapshot, but you're getting what you pay for with this lens. It's gonna do the job. If it can do it here, it can basically do it anywhere. So you try to figure out who's this lens for. And in my opinion, it's for someone who is not really an aspiring pro because I would not waste my money on, I would not waste $650 if my goal is to have a 70 to 200, or my goal is to have the 100 to 500. I wouldn't do that. But if you're just an everyday person that wants to go get some birds outside and quality isn't of the utmost uh, concern for you, or you want to photograph your grandkids or your kids playing sports outdoors, by all means, 650 bucks for something like this, you're not gonna find that on any other system, and good on Canon for coming out with inexpensive, affordable, options for other people. Just understand there's gonna be a quality loss and a quality difference, but if you're just out there trying to take pictures and have fun doing it, this is gonna get the job done for you. Do not try to use it indoors because you're not gonna have enough light to do that and your ISO is gonna to have to be super high and then the quality loss is not gonna be worth it. But that's that's who I think it's for. Um, getting See, when we zoom in on the next guy, this is trying to track a guy running down the field kind of on an angle. You could see that it's not super, super tack. Like I can't find where the critical focus point is on here. You know, we got the ball in the in the lacrosse thingy stick. This guy, he has a long stick. Again, long sticks, short sticks, there's goalie sticks. There's all different types of sticks that these guys have for lacrosse. But you can see at 400 millimeters at F8, the background is super in focus and he's not as isolated from the backdrop. Most people wouldn't notice that this isn't super sharp. I noticed it, that it's not super sharp. So that one was a miss, but was still usable. Uh, the next one, closer in on the goal, yep, he's nice and in focus in, in the face. You can see that the critical focus is there. It's, it's a difficult situation for any camera to be in this situation and uh, get the perfect focus. Good. So he's nice and in focus. Now, I did have the image stabilization on. You get five and a half stops of image stabilization normally, or you get up to six stops with any of the cameras that offer you IS built in, like the R5, R6, and the R3. Uh, so six stops of image stabilization, I guess that's gonna help you uh, in low light situations, handhold better, but it's not really gonna come into play when we're shooting this action stuff. And honestly, I could have turned it off for this. And some people may say, I turn off IS when it comes to sports. I've never seen a difference, even in the pro lenses, leaving it on or turning it off. It's just gonna counterbalance a little bit. I could have turned it off and tried it out. I just didn't even think about it because I'm so used to just leaving it on. So after I was done with lacrosse, I went over to the baseball field at St. Joe's because baseball was going on. It was a beautiful day and a 100 to 400 is a great range when it comes to baseball. Anything wider like 70 millimeters, yeah, it's not going to cut it when you're trying to get action, but 100 to 400, that's going to give you some nice results. It's also a little easier to shoot baseball because the pitcher's out there on the mound and the batter's in the batter's box and there's stuff happening around the field and they're not wearing big ass helmets. So you don't have to worry about that as much, which should give you some cleaner images. And the first thing that I started with was the pitcher. It's the easiest thing to photograph. I sat behind the plate. Now there is a netting there, a black net, and people always say, well, how do you shoot through it? You just shoot through it. It's not gonna ever get seen if you get close to it. If you sit 20 feet away from the black net and try to zoom through it, it's probably still gonna work, but it may start to show up at some point. So just get up close to it, but also check. I check check the tautness of the net to make sure that if a ball did come back and hit, that it wasn't going to hit enough that it's gonna hit the lens, which is gonna hit my face. And, and that's why I always, I check the tautness. Give yourself some room just in case something, and don't put your fingers in the net. We, are, we all learn this as kids. Don't put your fingers in the fence. You might lose them if they get hit with a ball. So 
I shot this one at 325 millimeters. We're at one two thousandth of a second. We're at F8. So you can see the tree in the background, nice and in focus, basically very little blown out there. Um, but this composition is cool. We've got the uh, the umpire here. We got the, the, the right-handed batter, and then we have the pitcher in his windup. Let's zoom in on his face. Is it sharp? Yeah, I mean, there's some, wow, there's actually some green fringing around the edge of his face. That's what you're gonna get. Purple fringing, green fringing. You may see that when you have some of these cheaper lenses, but look how far in I'm zoomed. Like, you wouldn't see that in the print. And I printed a bunch of these out. I printed three of these prints out on the Pro 1000 Canon printer because I like to see how does it hold up at 17 by 22 and not just looking at it on a computer when you zoom in this far, which would end up being the size of a wall or a building. A lot of people forget that printing is important. You you just look at, if you look at the stuff on the computer and you zoom in on it all the time, you're going so much further than if you just printed a 17 by 22. So keep that in mind that when you make a print, it's gonna look better than what you saw on the screen when you zoom all the way in because it's, you're just not enlarging those pixels. But colors look fine. I use Skittles as a starting point here from Pro-Pack 1 and I'm really happy with how those results worked. If you'd like to pick up this lens or any other lens for that matter, you can check out allenscamera.com. They're a mom and pop store that has been there since 1977 and they've been supporting me and helping me out for years and I like to support them. So head on over to allenscamera.com slash fro to pick up anything that you need and let them know that the fro sent you. The next image, we got a batter coming to the plate. I just wanted to focus in on the batter's gloves and see how the, the, the pitcher would be out of focus. We're at 400 millimeters, same thing, F8. The pitcher's out of focus on this. I would like them to be a little bit more, but wow, it's actually pretty sharp on the Franklin on the gloves. You're gonna get that at F8. You're gonna have extra leeway there, um, so yeah. Sharp works for me on that one. Continuing on with the pitcher, I wanted to show you what 400 millimeters again look like. I like this uh, this motion right here. We've got the catcher in the bottom right hand corner. We got the pitcher right here. You can see that we're at one two thousandth of a second at F8, 800 ISO as the sun was coming out. So if I was to go back to 5.6, uh, to the next shot, which is 200 millimeters. What, where are we at? We're at 7.1. So only at 100 millimeters and right around there, you'll be at 5.6. But if we go from eight to 5.6, what's happening? More light is being let in, which means speed up your shutter speed to compensate. It's gonna be a, a quicker shutter speed. That's gonna compensate by a stop or you could lower your ISO. In this case, I don't worry about the ISO, I worry about my shutter speed. Now, the next image is interesting. Watch this EVF clip, because I thought the pitcher was about to die. I thought he was about to take a ball in the face. Luckily, he got his glove up there and it didn't hit him in the face. Uh, I also didn't get the picture in focus, because this is the oh shit moment uh, where they have that Instagram where it's like. It was at this moment that Jonathan knew he up. Look at that, that's the oh shit, the ball is coming right at me. I miss focus, it happened so quick. I think, is his butt in focus? No, nothing's in focus on this. But I just wanted to show you the still, the video, I mean it happened so fast. He almost took that ball in the face and they ended up getting the guy out at first and then because it hit the pitcher, he gets an assist on the put out, which is a good thing. All right, now let's focus in on the batter. I wanted to shoot with the electronic shutter mode because I wanted to shoot at 20 frames per second. But look at what happens at 20 frames per second with this camera. The ball becomes an egg, it becomes oblong. Is it going to be a big deal for most things that you're shooting if you shoot with the electronic shutter with the R5 or the R6? The answer is no, but this is what it looks like when you shoot with a, uh, a slower readout camera. The R3 this wouldn't happen with, the A1 it wouldn't happen with, and the Nikon Z9 it wouldn't happen with. But that's what you see. I wanted to try and get bad on the ball at 20 frames per second. Pretty good shot, but the background being in focus at F8 becomes more of a distraction, but the colors are fine. The sharpness for the most part is what you would expect from it. Uh, and, and the last picture is a picture of the pitcher from the angle. I just thought it was a pretty cool shot of him right here. It was a good angle. Uh, we're at 1 4,000th at F8. Is he sharp? He's pretty sharp. He's as sharp as you would expect. That's what you're getting with this lens. It's going to be okay, right? It's not gonna be the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's gonna get the job done. It's $649. So, as I said earlier, if you're someone who just wants to take pictures outside and get more reach, this is the best option that you can get. $649 in the grand scheme of things for photography, for lenses, is not a lot of money. But just understand, there are some shortfalls, there are some pitfalls in F8, you're gonna see more in focus, but if you don't care about that, and you have an EOS R, an RP, an R6, even an R5, I would not do it on the R3, you can probably afford more if you own an R3 or R5, 
but if you just want to go out there and shoot and get some of those pictures, this lens is going to do it. If not, you pick up something like this, a 100 to 500. That's your birding lens. That's your lens that's going to be better. I, I, I don't even fully recommend this for the outdoor sports because of the 7.1, but this would get the job done and it would do it slightly better than this, but you're getting what you pay for. Now, there's two more tests to talk about. They're very, very important. One is the sniff test and the other is, of course, the wind tunnel test. We're going to start with the sniff test because I'm worried about the wind tunnel test because I think this is going to blow off the table, but hmm, it smells like Dollar General or Dollar Tree, which is now like a dollar and a quarter tree because I think inflation, so it went up. Uh, so that's the sniff test, wind tunnel test. I'm gonna keep a hand right here, Steven, just in case. <sighs> oh my God, it moved. Failed the wind tunnel test. Chalk that up to a failure of the wind tunnel. So is this a lens that you're gonna pick up? Let me know if you already own it or if you're planning on doing it, let me know down below. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.